Welcome to a lesson on related rates. Our goal today will be to solve related rate problems. Here are the guidelines that we'll follow. Number one, we'll identify all given quantities and quantities to be determined. We'll make a sketch if possible. Write an equation involving the variables whose rates of change are given or are to be determined. Then use the chain rule to implicitly differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to time, t. And then lastly, I will substitute into the resulting equations all known values for the variables and their rates of change in order to answer the questions. Let's take a look at an example. Find the rates of change of revenue, cost, and profit with respect to time. That's key because that's telling us we'll take the derivative with respect to t. Assume r of x, c of x are in dollars. Well, the first thing I notice is they did ask us for uh, profit as well. So let's determine the profit function. Remember, profit would be revenue minus cost. So we'll clear these parentheses and then combine our like terms. We have two like terms, and we obtain our profit function. So now we're ready to figure out the rate of change of the revenue cost and profit when x is equal to 10 and dx dt is equal to 5 units per day. So we want to differentiate all three of these equations with respect to t. So let's set all of this up. Remember, since we're differentiating with respect to t, if the term doesn't have a t in it, we'll have to apply the chain rule. So the derivative of r with respect to t would be 1 times dr dt. The derivative of 50x would be 50, again, times a factor of dx dt. The derivative of this would be negative x, but again, we're differentiating with respect to t, so it would be negative x times dx dt. The derivative of c with respect to t would be dc dt. The derivative of 10x with respect to t would be 10 times dx dt. The derivative of a constant, of course, would be zero. And lastly, for the profit function, we'd have dp dt is equal to, again, the derivative of this would be negative x times dx dt plus 40 times dx dt plus zero. Now we can evaluate the change in revenue with respect to time, change of cost with respect to time, and change of profit with respect to time, since we do know that at this instant in time, x is 10 and dx dt is 5. So what we can do now is replace x and dx dt with these values. So we'd have 50 times dx dt, which is given as 5, minus x, which is 10, times 5. This would give us 250 minus 50, or $200 per day. So remember, this is a rate of change. The revenue is changing at $200 per day at the instant when x equals 10 and dx dt is increasing by 5 units per day. If we look at the change in cost now, the change in cost with respect to time is equal to 10 times dx dt, or 10 times 5 which is equal to $50, again, per day, at the instant when x is 10 and dx dt equals 5. So revenue is increasing at $200 per day, cost is increasing at $250 per day, and lastly, we can determine the change in profit. Be negative x is equal to 10 times 5 dx dt plus 40, times dx dt, which is 5. This will give us negative 50 plus 200, $150 per day. That should make sense if revenue is increasing at $200 a day, but costs are also increasing at $50 per day. That would leave us an increase in profit of $150 per day. Let's take a look at another example. A pebble is dropped into a calm pond, causing ripples to form concentric circles. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a rate of 6 inches per second. 
when the radius is four feet, at what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing? Okay, so let's take a look at what's happening here. We have, okay, we have a pebble dropped in water and it's forming ripples. Let's record all the information that's given. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of six inches per second. So that would represent the change in R with respect to time is equal to six inches per second. Next, when the radius is four feet, so the radius is equal to four feet, at what rate is the area changing? We want to find the change in the area with respect to time. Well, we're talking about areas where our formula is going to be the area of a circle, which is area equals pi r squared. Now, one thing I notice over here, these units are in feet and these units are in inches, so that's not going to work. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as 0 0.5 feet per second. Next, we'll find the derivative of both sides with respect to t. So on the left side, we'd have the derivative of a with respect to t would be dA dt. Now remember, pi is a constant, so the derivative of this term would be 2 times pi r to the first times dr dt. So we're trying to find dA dt, and now we have all the information we need to determine that. So let's sub in the known values. 2 times pi times r, which we said was 4, and dr dt is 0 0.5. And this value is approximately 12.57. Uh, we're dealing with a change in area, so this would be inches squared per second. So the change in area is approximately 12.75 inches squared per second when the radius is exactly 4 feet and the change in the radius with respect to time is 0.5 feet per second. Let's take a look at one more. An airplane is flying at an altitude of 6 miles on a path that will take it directly over a radar station if the distance s from the radar is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour when s equals 10 what is the speed of the plane okay there's a lot going on here so let's get started we know this is given as six miles the vertical distance from the plane to the ground the distance s is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour that's telling us that ds dt is equal to negative 400 miles per hour. We know it's negative because it's decreasing. S is equal to 10 miles. They want to know the speed of the plane. Speed is measured in relation to the ground. We want to know dx dt. How fast is x changing with respect to time? That would be the speed of the plane. Well, the equation that we're going to use that relates these three would be the Pythagorean theorem, which states that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the square of the legs. So what we need to do now is find the derivative of this equation with respect to t on both sides. So let's take this over to the next screen. Okay, so I transferred all the information we had on the previous screen. Let's go ahead and find the derivative with respect to t, we would have 2s times ds dt is equal to 2x times dx dt. Again, we're applying the chain rule because these terms do not have t's in them. And then the derivative of a constant would be 0. Remember, our goal is to find dx dt. So what we're going to do now is divide both sides by 2x and simplify. So what we have is dx dt is equal to s over x times ds dt. We know the value of s, we know the value of ds dt, but we do not know the value of x yet. So we need to kind of think through this again. Go back to our triangle. We know the instant we're concerned about, s is equal to 10. So let's go ahead and label s with 10. And now we know two sides of a right triangle. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the remaining side, which is x. So we'll have 10 squared is equal to 6 squared plus x squared. So 64 equals x squared, so x is equal to 8. 
Now we can find the speed of the plane, or dx dt. So we have s is equal to 10, x is equal to 8, ds dt is equal to negative 400, and we get dx dt equal to negative 500 miles per hour. The reason this is negative is because it's actually a velocity. So our actual speed, we can take the absolute value of this and say the plane is going 500 miles per hour. I hope you found these examples useful. Thank you for watching.